the art quarry by apostle michael orubo before it come you must pay the price remain blessed as you listen to this utterance mysteries and revelation from our lord i just want to speak briefly on the theme the outpouring just to by the spirit help us to understand and to relate more experientially with the subject our world is evil we are in an evil age if you study the scripture in galatians chapter 1 from verse 3 to verse 4 the bible speaking to us and he told us one of the reasons jesus died was to deliver us from this evil age one of the major reasons he said grace be to you and peace from our father through our lord jesus christ and he said who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of the father this world is evil if you look around you even in the natural you will be able to tell that it takes a lot of momentum spiritual momentum and positive energy to engender good evil thrives naturally if you look around you for example plants that you don't nurture the moment they are called grasses they blossom but when you call it a flower the moment it is designed to bring beauty it dies if it is supposed to be for food it dies the ones that does not add value to your existence on their own naturally blossom you don't need to add fertilizer to grass for it to grow and prosper sometimes grasses strive to grow even when there is where there is cement and concrete but when you plant something that you should eat you will need to add manure add fertilizer with grasses and labor for it to prosper when you plant a flower the moment the sun comes up it dies unless you keep nurturing it so this age does not support good it's an evil age and so one of the strategies that god made available for us the children of light in order to prosper darkness notwithstanding is the technology of the outpouring of the spirit because we are not hopeless if there were no spiritual advantages we would have been doomed because the world is evil but there are advantages that makes for our progress evil notwithstanding in john chapter 1 verse 4 the bible said the light shines in the darkness so darkness's presence does not stop our prosperity because we have a superior technology to evil he said the light shines in the darkness and he said the darkness comprehended it not verse 5 the darkness does not have the power to comprehend light but there is a technology you must subscribe to for your light to shine if you study isaiah chapter 60 from verse 1 he said arise shine for thy light is come and the reason he said so is because he said darkness we cover the earth and he said gross darkness the people so in case you are not aware that there are demonic and invincible forces that wants to destroy you welcome to this realization because the bible paints it in white and black that the earth will be covered with darkness and he said upon the people it's not just darkness he said it is gross darkness and so when you find retardation when you find sickness when you find reproach when you find bad luck when you find evil they are all definitions of darkness but even in the midst of that darkness he said arise and shine because your light is come and so this is not supposed to be a threat to the believer this is supposed to be an assurance beyond doubt that whatever it is happening around you there is a hope on the inside 
even if you don't have what to eat even if you were sick even if they told you you are dying he said even in the midst of gross darkness there is a possibility to arise because your light is come and so the outpouring of the spirit is one of the lights that God makes available because when it speaks of light in the spiritual context it's not just talking illumination it's talking about possibilities that holds the power to turn your circumstances around anything that makes you go backward is darkness darkness in the spirit is not light out darkness in the spirit are forces that reduce the quality of your existence and so anything that comes to improve the quality of your existence in the spirit is called light and one of such lights in the spirit is the outpouring of the holy ghost isaiah 32 from verse 13 to 15 the bible gave us a scenario because you see it doesn't matter where you are now it matter what you carry because life may look glorious now tomorrow may come with trials life may look difficult now tomorrow can be glorious so what you are going through now is not the factor the factor is what do you carry because if life is glorious now and attacks come tomorrow what will you do the glory of life is not what you carry at not where you are at the moment it's what you carry the power to defy circumstances whether good or bad you keep ascending that's the glory of life but there is something you must carry to be able to live life like that the people you see blossoming they are not blossoming because there are no challenges they are blossoming because they have something that whether good or evil they know how to ascend they know how to arise they know how to shine and so this scripture revealed to us that life will throw arrows shades and different things at you but you are not hopeless if you know how to tap into the technology of the outpouring he said upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars this is the land of the people of god it was a land promised them it was a land that was supposed to flow with milk and honey have you seen people before at least i heard a testimony of a woman who was doing well until the husband died because that's how life that's the shade life brings at you it tries to take away the things that are your advantage but if you know how to receive the outpouring it doesn't matter what happens the devil can throw arrows at you he will bounce back and more glorious he said my the land of my people remember the bible spoke of this land as a land flowing with milk and honey but suddenly he said out of this land he said they shall grow thorns and briars and they say upon all the houses of joy and upon the houses of joyous city see what will happen to those houses a house that was full of joy a house that was full of glory he said suddenly the palaces shall be forsaken he said the multitude of the city shall be left he said the forts and the towers shall be for dens and joy for white asses and pastures for flock suddenly a glorious land turned into a land of desolation as if all hopes are lost and then in verse 15 he said until the spirit they poured again upon us from on high then he said the wilderness shall be turned to a fruitful field and the fruitful field shall become a forest so it doesn't matter what the situation is a glorious situation can be turned to evil but if you are under the technology of the outpouring no matter the evil that comes your way the outpouring sustains the capacity to alter the situation and turn it out for good and so when we talk about the outpouring the first thing we are referring to is fruitfulness even in the place of drought because in the wilderness a forest can emerge it doesn't matter what the devil calls your situation when the outpouring begins to happen a wilderness can become a forest and so the outpouring speaks of fruitfulness fruitfulness that cannot be truncated 
men can prosper in an evil age only if there's an outpouring of the spirit upon their lives no matter the ups and downs that comes you will keep ascending in fruitfulness not because you know the president no not because you know the governor no not because you have a good business no even that business the devil can attack it the reason you will be fruitful is because the spirit is poured upon you from on high many are not aware you know what i want to share with us tonight is the protocol of the outpouring what you need to do to keep the outpouring perpetually but it's important for you to understand first what the outpouring has the power and the potential to bring to pass in your life i am a very young man but i've seen a lot of fluctuations in life and i know you can't depend on anything except god i have seen the glorious and the mighty fall like a pack of cards it will only take a continuous outpouring of the spirit to keep you in a glorious realm regardless of the challenges that come your way and so the outpouring is the spiritual protocol for fruitfulness the second thing about the outpouring is that the outpouring is God's system of upgrading your life every one of us here needs continuous and productive upgrade periodic consistent and progressive upgrade if there's no upgrade in your life a challenge can come and pull you down and so the outpouring affects your environment by bringing fruitfulness but over and above your environment the outpouring upgrades you yourself the quality of your being is upgraded because many times your environment can be defied but if you are upgraded nothing can affect you a billionaire once lost all his wealth in one day and that same evening they found him playing golf and they told him why are you able to play golf in a day that you lost billions of dollars and the man made a statement he said i made the money the money didn't make me so long as i remain alive i will make more that's a man who has an upgraded life his circumstances don't define him and so the outpouring comes to affect your circumstances but over and above your circumstance the outpouring comes to improve you this is why fishermen became so wise that their speakings today are being studied in schools of theology by professors and they are not yet able to exhaust it hope you know peter james and john were ordinary fishermen but when the outpouring came upon them they became wiser than their generation till date they are studying the writings of peter in schools of theology and people are gaining bachelor's degree in theology by reading petrine epistles an illiterate fisherman suddenly got into an upgraded version of himself that the things he spoke is the basis for which men are made professors two thousand years later his words could not be exhausted because of the wisdom that he entered upon the holy ghost coming on him the outpouring upgrades the quality of your environment but over and above that the outpouring upgrades your life and your life upgraded is a superior insurance to your environment upgraded because your life regulates your environment and so the outpouring does not just affect your environment it affects you i made that statement to let you know that you may not even be well educated when god upgrades you you will have more wisdom than a professor in the university and the things the things that will come out of your life even a professor will not be able to achieve it this is not to talk down on education but they are superior knowledge than certificate a man's life is superior to a piece of paper it is the wisdom at work in him that defines the level of impact he makes in a generation so the second thing the outpouring does is to upgrade the quality of your existence the third thing the outpouring ensures to do is to make sure everybody is affected in Joel chapter chapter 2 verse 28 the bible said and in those days he said it shall come to pass afterwards that my spirit will be poured upon all flesh and he said your sons and your daughters will prophesy he said your old men will dream dreams your young men will see vision and so when the outpouring comes nobody's left out 
it is only the technology of the outpouring that God ensures that everybody is blessed. Hope you remember when it happened in the upper room. The Bible said there were cloven tongues as of fire upon the heads of every man. He said, ask of me rain in the time of the latter rain. He said, I will cause bright clouds and I will cause rain to fall on every blade of grass. So when the outpouring comes, there is an insurance for everybody. Because the outpouring insists that everybody must be included. Because this is the season of outpouring, I decree over every head here, both on ground and online, no one shall be exempted. That's why we speak about operations of the spirit like this. That has the power to affect your environment. That has the power to upgrade your life. And that has the power to include and involve everybody. It is only in the situation of an outpouring that nobody is exempted. Whether literate or illiterate. Whether young or old. Whether male or female. The outpouring insists that there is a measure for everybody. Every one of you under the sound of my voice. There is a measure for you tonight. And I decree over your life. Your wilderness is turned to a fruitful field. And your fruitful field is counted for a forest. I decree over your life. Everywhere you have limitations. Your life is upgraded by the spirit. Thank you father. When I start talking about the operations of the outpouring tomorrow. Then I can minister in the spirit. Tonight is just to show you how to engender an outpouring. Because the outpouring does not come without requirements. There's always a protocol. And that's why when I talk about the operations tomorrow, I will talk a bit about Gethsemane. The forces that provoke an outpouring. Because of what the outpouring is capable of doing, there is a protocol so that those who have it are worthy of it. When the outpouring comes, it affects a dispensation. It affects a generation. It affects everybody around that atmosphere. And so it's not something God can throw around carelessly. There's a protocol for engendering and outpouring. And there are five of them I will list to you very quickly. If you know this, blessed are you. Because you can provoke some measures of outpouring in your own house. You can provoke some measures of outpouring in your business. I know this thing by experience. We didn't start doing what we are doing because we are lucky. We are not doing what we are doing because people love us. We are doing what we are doing because there is a power that insists we must do it. If it were for men, we would have been buried by now. This man talking to you is talking to you in the midst of warfare. People are expecting you to go down. People are expecting you to be destroyed out of bitterness, insecurity, and wickedness of the heart. But because there is a backing of the spirit, even if a whole generation turns against you, you keep going forward and they can't stop it. That's where God wants believers to operate from. Do you think people care that you are making impact? Do you think people care that you are blessing people? Thousands of souls being won into the kingdom every day. Widows being fed. Lives being transformed. I can't tell you about bandits that come to repent. Crying because of the messages they hear. But wicked men who still think only about themselves wish you to go down. And they are doing everything possible to pull you down. You would think if the Holy Ghost does not back you, you will stand for one day. I speak over the life of somebody today. Every force ganged up against you for your destruction. In your own very sight, they will go down. You don't know why we need an outpouring. Our world is wicked. If you know what men cook, cook and gang up, to say and do against you you will be shocked demons are ganging up men are ganging up and in the spirit of justice you did nothing to them it's just ego pride and their humanity it won't let them see you prosper but they will live and see you prosper and there's nothing they can do about it he said the light shines in the darkness the darkness 
will not be reasonable to allow the light that's why the light shines the shining is the authority that light has over darkness that's why you need an outpouring and that's why you must understand how to provoke one if god stopped moving on my life today it won't take one week i'll be buried because of the forces that have risen against me he said many are there that have risen up against me and said there's no hope for me he said but thou O lord you are a shield for me my glory and the lifter up of my head that's the secret of invincibility that the holy ghost is constantly moving over your life but there is a system that you must subscribe to to keep the holy ghost moving on your life it's the technology of the outpouring the power that turns a wilderness to a fruitful field and a fruitful field to a forest the power that improves the quality of your life and the power that makes sure everything around you prospers is the power called the outpouring of the spirit how do you engender an outpouring number one through discernment of times and seasons every outpouring has an allocation into god's calendar there are times and there are seasons for outpouring if you study this book we just read in Joel 2 28 it said in the last days i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh the same scripture was reiterated in acts chapter 2 there is always a day a portion to it in fact when you study acts 2 from verse 1 it said when the day of pentecost was fully come there is always a day there is always an appointment where provocations of the spirit takes place he said when the day of pentecost was fully come he said they were together in one accord in one place they knew that season was over them and so they kept their antenna ready the reason many never see out for it is because when that season is right they don't discern it it is when the holy ghost wants to move that they are interested in their business that's when they are interested in gossiping others that's when they are carried about doing many things and that season passes and they are not aware he said the sons of isaac he said these men they had understanding of times and seasons and they knew what israel ought to do every time is not the same he said at a certain time the angel of the lord went down and troubled the waters a man who walks perpetually under an open heaven and the move of the spirit is the man that knows when the holy ghost moves his sensitivity his antenna and his discernment is sharp but for your discernment to be sharp you must be a man who is subject to the laws of the spirit many times we negate the promptings of the holy ghost listen the best way the holy ghost speaks to us is through life life so that nobody denies life is a technology in the spirit that's why when you give birth to a child nobody teaches that child hunger the child knows the meaning of hunger before reading books when a child is born that child knows exactly where food passes into the body nobody teaches the child that is a mouth that he should use to eat he starts using the mouth to look for what to eat because life in itself is an educational syllabus and so when the holy ghost wants to begin to teach you the first teacher he uses is life and the way life will operate it operates through promptings promptings knowings inspirations and you will discover when the season of an outpouring comes the holy ghost begins to prompt you sometimes it tells you to take a fast sometimes it tells you to take a retreat sometimes it begins to draw you away from many things people who have spiritual intelligence knows that when such promptings begins to take place it means the cloud are gathering in the spirit because it's when the cloud is gathered that it empties itself upon the earth but many believers are not sensitive to promptings and so they have missed many outpourings the first protocol of an outpouring is discerning of times and seasons and such discernment comes through promptings and knowings of the spirit you are not weak you have not just learned how to use your weapons the bible said we were fearfully and wonderfully made we are a strange species 
even angels look at us with admiration they marvel when they see us Ephesians 3 10 said the church is to teach the angels the manifold principalities not just angels the manifold wisdom of God we are a strange species in the realm of God because of the things God has put in us in fact the Bible says that he pleased the father that the fullness of the Godhead should dwell in Christ bodily and the Bible made us to understand that Christ is in every one of us they say Christ in you the hope of glory that means the fullness of the Godhead dwells on your inside there is no angel that carries that measure we are a strange being but the problem is that we are too sensitive of the outward we are not sensitive of the inward the world on your inside is bigger than the world on your outside this is not about being a preacher this is about being a spiritual person because that's where your advantage lies many can't discern times they can't discern seasons and so they are running from place to place seeking help whereas they are supposed to be the help their world is looking for they say you are the light of the world a city set upon a hill that cannot be hid but for you to operate in that order you must come alive in the spirit and so the first protocol of the outpouring is the protocol of discernment i pray for somebody here today your spiritual sensitivity on account of this meeting will be awakened it's only christians that take things like this for granted which is they know moments moments give one signal in the spirit every witch is alert they can pick those signals pick those vibrations they walk by signals they are so secretive that you will not even find them gather like this they know how to pick the signal at night and know how to connect through teleporting to meet in their meeting grounds because everything in that realm is governed by secrecy so every witch understands signals movements it's only a believer that even when you announce it they can't pick it that's why we are weak whereas we should be the powerful ones he said i've seen an abomination on the face of the earth that beggars are riding on horses white princes are trekking because they don't know the things that are meant for their advantage as you leave this meeting something will happen to your spirit there's no not one person listening to me today that will miss any spiritual moment the second protocol of an outpouring is obedience when god prompts you he expects you to obey because it will lead you to the location where the outpouring is to take place and that location may not be natural sometimes that location is in the spirit but it will take obedience for you to route it before the outpouring happened in acts chapter 2 the bible said in luke 24 49 jesus commanded them he said tarry in jerusalem until you are endued with power he told them what to do and he told them where to do it if they tarried in samaria they would have missed the outpouring the reason many people never come under the outpouring of the spirit is their disobedience tarry and don't just tarry tarry in jerusalem and they were wise even when jesus resurrected and he met the disciples he said go and tell them and peter to go to jerusalem as i have told them because the outpouring is location sensitive and is moment sensitive and so obedience is what routes you into the circumference where the outpouring takes place in proverbs chapter 1 verse 23 he said if you hearken to my commandments he said i will pour my spirit upon you so the outpouring is not for everybody the outpouring is for those who are obedient there are many apostles today who walk under a dry atmosphere there are many prophets who walk under a dry atmosphere it doesn't take title it takes obedience when your obedience is not complete your operations will be dry and if you are dry demons will molest you 
if you are dry your world will deteriorate and disintegrate because the energizing of the spirit will not be there it takes obedience to walk into the atmosphere of the outpouring everywhere you find an, out an outpouring you have found the people obeying god when there is disobedience there can be no outpouring the second protocol for an outpouring is obedience to the voice of god the promptings of the holy ghost and the leading of the spirit i'm showing you things that makes men invincible great men are the most attacked men great men are the most tested men when you talk of trial if you want to know the location of trials go and find overcomers the reason they are great the reason they are overcomers is because they subdue trials if you don't overcome a trial you can never be great many times people who don't make impact they think they face the greatest challenge most of you are testifying that you came to mommy you came to mommy you should have waited for mommy to bring one of her problems to you then you will understand that the person who seems to be standing strong is the one who is fought the most but the reason he's standing is because he or she knows things that others don't know and he doesn't just know them he obeys them the key to a life of perpetual outpouring of the spirit is perpetual obedience when obedience becomes lacking outpouring is cut off that's why many revivers are truncated because of the flesh flesh and human propensities because when flesh arises flesh rebels against the laws of god you want to see god move in your life you want to see perpetual outpourings in your life begin to obey god and see how god will overrun you like a river number three protocol for our parents is a hard posture this is where many fail you'll find them laboring in church all their life but their heart is full of evil all the gossips emanate from them all the lies and backbiting emanate from them and a man's utterances is a revelation of his heart posture when you want to find out a man's heart posture listen to what he says they are trusting god to move in their lives but they are the ones sowing all the seeds of this god they go to a they go to b and all they are talking about is another person and it's always in the negative light and if they are not talking about it they are listening to it because they enjoy to hear the downfall of others and if they don't know it's a state of corruption of the heart a man who cannot evangelize jesus to 10 people in a month can speak against another person in a negative light to 100 people in a day because his heart reflects who he really is and so before god pours his spirit upon you there will always be a demand for heart circumcision if there's no circumcision of the heart there can never be an outpouring in acts chapter 2 verse 1 that we just read the bible said they were in one accord their heart was knitted as one one accord is different from gathering together what we have in this building is called gathering together one accord is a state when our heart is one we love ourselves genuinely and we look out for ourselves even when one falls it's not a news because there's no testimony in it rather if, if one falls those who are stronger they lift him up the bible said to support and to bear the body of one another that we may fulfill the law of christ but when you find a people that are disconnected at heart and evil they celebrate when one of them falls in fact it makes the best news headline even if the news is about to die down they propagate it the more if they've not heard about that matter again for some time they will try to stir the dust because they enjoy controversy they enjoy when people are put down that is why even though the holy ghost wants to pour himself upon us our heart will not let him 
somebody said the revival in nigeria is 12 miles wide and two inches deep noise all over the place about revival but when you come to a gathering of three people you find evil and corruption there's no love there's no genuineness everybody talking mysteries and talking bogus things whereas all the evil emanate from among us he said our revival is 12 miles wide but two inches deep because christ has not worked on us the revivals we heard of and we read about it's not about noise it's not about a message it's not about popularity it's about transformation that's why you hear revival hit a city sin dies we heard of the, the revival in wales how that even police the number of uniform personnel had to be reduced because there were no more criminals that's a revival a revival is not a message a revival is a spirit of transformation that breaks men and brings them back to a place of true holiness that when you touch them you touch christ we have intelligent messages we have kingdom messages but we are not kingdom personalities fighting ourselves day and night evil and corruption you will be shocked that most of the evil you hear about men it didn't come from outsiders it came from the church because that's where all the evil are is whereas everybody is doing hours of prayer preaching revival prophesying revival shouting revival these hearts cannot host revival that's why it is widespread but shallow in depth because the heart is evil the heart is wrong if this is what we call revival we are joking because the generations past they will not endorse this because what they call revival was more about transformation it was more about purity and that's why their own revival affected society today we call revival a large auditorium with thousands of people gathered singing and dancing songs that emanated from the club and when the same people go into the city the next day you can't find jesus most of the states in this country are christian states thousands of people in church on sunday go to the market on monday and you will find jezebels people who are colonized by babylon you will even be more secured trading with the sons of the bond woman than trading with somebody who calls himself a christian and we are singing revival we don't know revival what we are doing is pursuit of ambition just spreading our name all over the place when true revival comes we will find christ in people you need to see when when three or four pastors gather 70 percent of their discussion is about other people in derogatory notes when we hear the news that something wrong happened to somebody you need to see the joy in the camp when a brother is injured and when they are not injured we use witchcraft to pull them down and we are talking revival no revival is a high posture hard pourings have to do with hard posture he said they were in one accord read the book of acts of the apostles many times you either see one accord or singleness of heart one accord singleness of heart in acts chapter 2 verse 47 he said they went from house to house praising god in singleness of heart and he said god added to the church daily such as should be saved they were one their heart was pure their hearts were pure people speaking capital letter tongues and with pride in tongues tongues that don't transform tongues that only sound loud and we are carrying them all about on phones messages that don't transform messages preach out of bitterness when i have problem with you i use that problem to preach bitterness and people hear it the more they hear it the more corruption enter their heart and we say we are preaching revival where is the purity there is the love that flows from a pure heart that's why there are no outpourings because when outpourings comes it's not just about population it's not just about a sound message it's about true repentance and brokenness and so a heart posture is a basis that the holy ghost cannot negate if there must be an outpouring number four outpourings 
are provoked by prayer and waiting upon the Lord. When people genuinely want to see an outpouring, they give themselves to prayer. In Luke 24, 49 that we just read, it said carry. That word carry is not just wait. It means wait, pray. Wait in the spirit. Because that is what stirs the heaven. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, it said, My people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. He said, I will hear them from heaven and I will pour out myself upon them and I will heal their land. We are a church today that loves comedy, that loves dancing and singing, but no praying. And most of the dancing and singing we are doing are picked from the world. Call a music artist today, he's dressed like a worldly musician. Because that's where they draw their inspiration from. I'm not saying dress like Moses and Elijah. But I'm saying a secular musician who does not have the spirit cannot inspire me. There's no modesty. The, 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 the essence of the spirit is lacking. You see people bad. The reigning hairstyle. Because they flow with the trends of society. And these things are mind controlling system it's not about fashion it's a spirit writing a program for a generation i was sharing with them two weeks ago some four years back every young man wanted to wear a white jean today every young man is wearing a tight jean because the world dictates a trend that controls their minds and that controlling system transmits demonic energy and they don't just stop in the dressing most of the beats are secular beats nowadays they can even play christian songs in nightclubs because the beats are the same you are hearing a beat it doesn't edify the spirit of god in you edify you in the spirit of god rather you are hearing a beat it doesn't provoke you into god's presence you are hearing a beat all you are thinking of is the same dance steps that they are dancing in the club because that's where the vibration came from and because we can't pray we now look for what we take the time of service and so when prayer becomes so lacking we now import comedians in a live service to come and help us while away time with comedy I'm not saying there's anything wrong with comedy or comedians. They are Christian comedians. But comedy is not part of church service. When Christians gather together for other events, they can bring Christian comedians to make them laugh. Do that in a birthday party. Do that in, 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 in any other meeting. Get together you have to do. Not a, a service where you are coming to worship God. Because everything that happens in the service is God's word. So that God can pour himself upon us. We didn't come to service to be entertained. We came to service to worship a king. And that king did not invite a comedian. But when prayer is lacking, then we substitute things that helps us while away time. In the days of old, thank God, our mamas here have been Christians for more than 40 years. Those days, VG start from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And all they are doing is either word-oriented or prayer. They didn't even have all the advanced equipments we have here. But they could come for vigils, teach the word of God, and pray till morning. Today when we have vigils, oh, it shows how weak our spirits are. Weak. That's why you can't find outpourings. For outpourings to happen, men must press. It's like a wine press. They must press in the place of prayer until their spirit opens for God to fill them up. In Acts chapter 4, verse 23 and 24, after they were beaten, the Bible said they returned to their own company and they lifted their voice in prayer. And in verse 30, he said the place where they were was shaking and they were filled with the Spirit again. Every time there was an outpouring, there was prayer, worship, going to heaven.
a new Jerusalem must have to appear. Because this one we are doing here is social gathering. Church has become a social gathering. Even when you find people praying, it's because they have needs. The days when men come to God and say, Use me for your glory. Lord, I surrender to you all. Those days are gone. And it reflects in the kind of songs we sing now. Go and listen to songs that were sung 30 years ago. It will show you the quality of Christianity they have. Or they had. And then compare it with the songs we sing now. You can never hear songs about the old rugged cross anymore. You can never hear songs about repentance. You can never hear songs about total surrender anymore. Songs are now either about dancing or about the God that loads us with bounties. That's all we know. And we hope to have an outpouring. No. If you want an outpouring in your life, in your family, in your organization, you must teach people again the way of the altar. Because when men kneel on the altar, the heavens open. Finally, outpourings are provoked when people make up their minds to advance God's kingdom and only God's kingdom. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says not many days from now, you shall receive the Holy Ghost and power. Not so that you prosper in business. Not so that you have food to eat. He said you shall receive the Holy Ghost and power that you might be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and in the outermost part of the world. Not because when the outpouring comes, there won't be food. I told you already, the outpouring provokes abundance. But over and above our welfare, that abundance is meant for kingdom advancement. And so the people that will see an outpouring are the people who are sold out to God, willing to be used and willing to advance God's kingdom. When the outpouring happened in Acts chapter 2, in verse 14, immediately, the Bible said, Peter and the eleven stood up and they began to advance the kingdom. That day, 3,000 was added to the church. It was about kingdom advancement. We have no testimony of an outpouring except as we begin to talk about the territories that were conquered for Jesus. Except as we begin to talk about the souls that were won for kingdom. I pray over somebody listening to me tonight. The grace and the power that engenders an outpouring it rests upon you now. Can somebody bow her head now and pray in a moment? I want you to pray genuinely from your heart. Genuinely. In two minutes, I'm out of here. But when the outpouring comes, the wilderness will be turned to a fruitful field. The quality of our lives will be upgraded. And it will affect everyone. But before it comes, we must pay the price. We must pay the price. We must pay the price. And you tell the Lord, give me the grace. Give me the grace. I've heard what it takes for an outpouring. Give me the grace. Nobody is a master in this thing. We are all being helped at different levels.